this meeting of the St. Augustine Port Waterway and Beach District, uh, March 15th, 2022. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next up is the invocation. Whose turn is it to read the invocation? No, oh, I think it's for. Uh, May have been Sandy, James. What, what, Sandy, what group are you in? What group? Yeah, like I'm five. I'm, I'm one. I'm three. One. I thought it would be two. Who's in group two? It's either Jane or Chris. Yeah, it's Jane, I believe. I think it's Jane. Okay. Tom, are you? Take are it you over. locked and loaded to step in on her behalf here? <laughs> okay, you want me to say it? Yes. Don't mind. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's ask God's blessing on this meeting. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that we can be here, that we're all healthy, and we're able to do the work that you want us to do. We ask you to guide us in our deliberations today. Be with us and let us make the correct decisions on the waterways and beaches of St. John's County. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Tom. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Rivers. Here. Commissioner Way. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Flowers. Here. Commissioner West. Council. Uh, next up is adoption and approval of agenda. Does anybody have any modifications to the agenda? I I I think that uh, under new business B and D are similar enough that we could probably consolidate them into one agenda item, right? Oh, yeah. um, but otherwise, uh, I have no modifications. Um, um. Are you asking if anybody wants to change anything? Is that what you just asked? On the agenda, that's right. Okay. The um, with Miss West being out, I would just I would just really like to have a full board to do the uh, uh, district's attorney. Um, what do y'all think? We've just never had a full board for the last three meetings. Uh, I'm fine with pushing that agenda item to the next meeting. Uh, uh, so I will make a motion to uh, adopt the agenda as written, with the exception that sorry, 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 no sorry. that items B and D under new business are consolidated, and item F is pushed to next meeting. Uh, do I have a second? Did you say so? We're going to do item F at the next one. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I'll second. So it's like uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. Great. Which one's going to the next meeting? Uh, F, uh, the district attorney, uh, the district's rather attorney uh, discussion. Can I, can we move, okay, so we have the website first under new. Can I switch mine E to C and move C to E? Yeah, so that's going to be, uh, let's just make sure we have this straight. We'll do website redesign, one. Yeah. Uh, two will be scheduling new time and new day of the week for meetings because that's consolidated B and D. Uh, number three will be secretary treasurer uh, continuation of services. And uh, item four will be port consultant. Right. Is that right? Can you do that? Uh, I have no problem with that. Did anybody want to make a motion for sure, that I'll modification move. as well? Okay. So moved by Chris and seconded by Sandy, it looks like. So all in favor? Aye. All right. Great. All right. So moved. Uh, let me just make sure I've got that written down right. Good. Um, next is public comment. Members of the public, please. Um, I think it would be nice. Oh, sorry. My just name is Robert Heidenhove. Yeah, just uh, name and address, please. 415 North Ocean Grandy Drive, uh, Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, 32082. Can I speak now? Absolutely. Um, I think it would be nice if we got Zoom in here that people remotely can watch the meeting. Is there a, a big problem to do that? Um, we've asked, uh, we're actually supposed to hear back from Max today, is that right? The city of St. Augustine Beach. We've tried and failed to get video services in here a number of times over the years. I, I believe, if I recall, the problem with the city of St. Augustine Beach is they are completely unwilling to give it. The, co the commission, in fact, voted against allowing us to use their equipment and staff. Uh, yeah, we have to use their equipment and their staff. We, would, we have to use their equipment and staff, and also they will not let us use their equipment or their staff. Well, how about this? Somebody right there puts a camera on that thing the last three or four meetings. There's no reason we can't record our own meeting now. It wouldn't be Zoom. When you say Zoom, do you mean... Well, I'm talking about where computer. people can log on from yeah, home online. Okay, and watch that's... the meeting. Right, so that's a, you're talking about a, a live stream. Yeah, real yeah, time. Right, right, real time. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, we could do that down at the city and... 
we should maybe look again at, at moving the meetings back to the city. Well, that's. Max said something about live stream, so I don't know the cost or any of the issues with that, but what we would need to do. We just can't set something up and then we have to be able to get it onto the website and onto, you know, so it's not even on the website. I'm, I'm not sure the, all the details of how we do that. Right. This is not to say that it's impossible. <laughs> but make a uh, motion or something to look into it. We actually, we're, like I said, we're currently looking. We're waiting for the city, uh, the San Jose Beach city manager, to get back to us. This this is now the second time that we've asked about it because we asked the first time I think in 2019 and we were rejected by the city of San Augustine Beach. Um, so we are currently trying again. But there's another location you said. Well, potentially, we're going to discuss possibly. I think moving these meetings, either changing the time or potentially changing the location. I know the city of St. Augustine, uh, you know, the downtown uh, commission meeting room has been discussed. They have uh, obviously live streaming capabilities. Although who knows if the city will also reject <laughs> our request to use their facilities that way. So we're not sure, but we're in the process of discussing that right now wow. uh, and trying to figure it out. Okay, thank you. Sure. Mr. Meek, too, there was also a question. I think I saw in one of your emails about the live streaming if we had to do, um, what is the sign language? Well, ADA compliance, uh, right. Uh, we had that already actually came up before. Now, the city manager here told us that we didn't have to do that unless we were asked to do it, just to throw that out there that he had come back with that comment last time we checked on that. Uh, well, I would offhand disagree with his opinion if that's what it is. Um, the ADA requires what it requires, whether someone asks for it or not. But um, that's I'll what we were be told happy when we were talking about whatever live streaming support or the comment city of St. has Beach. if it's pertinent to that issue. Well, I, I do have something to say because we had a, we had a client come in who was deaf, and she said um, it, it is required that we have an ADA, or we have a, somebody who does sign language in there with her. And because of our office, we looked it up. There's no law that says we have to do it. Doctor's offices have to, government has to, but not little tiny little businesses. That's just what the city manager told told us. Yeah. So just something to look into. And he said yeah. uh, not we'll, until we got the request. It would be nice. But. Yeah. Um, any other public comment? Seeing nothing. Uh, great. Uh, that brings us to government representative comments. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Nathan Otter, St. John's County Parks and Recreation. Um, I have some beach access uh, improvement updates for you guys today. So we have um, two ongoing projects right now. The Mini Street uh, walkover is being replaced. If you guys are not familiar with this location, it's uh, with the drive-on beach access of Mary Street. It's uh, directly south of there. St. Right Austin Beach? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yep. Um, then additionally, Orange Avenue is uh, getting replaced as well. Um, that is along the Atlantic View, so that's just north of, those loca of that previous location. These are walkovers? You don't walk over. Yes, ma'am. Um, Additionally, now moving north into our northern beaches, we have four of them that are about to get started. Um, one of them started last week. So 11th Street, 20th Street, Boating Club Road, and Surfside Park. Um, these will all be uh, replacements of what was existing there. Are these, um, which beach is this on? North these beach. are northern beaches. When you uh, say north beach. I'm sorry, so what I call northern beaches would be north of Volano. Um, okay. So when you cross south, over the bridge. South, 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 okay. Yep. Um, so those are walkovers too okay yes ma'am yep um and uh these are like i said these are replacements for um existing ones that were outdated or needed severe repairs things like that um, but they're all brand new um, we'll be utilizing a new material called trex it's a composite board made to last longer um so you know if you guys do um, get any constituents or so have comments about them please send our way um it's a new uh, material that we haven't used yet so uh, we're looking for as much feedback on that as possible they don't rot do they that's the the idea or the thought, right? Um, yep, they, it, they won't it, rot. It works. I've, I've been using Trex in, yeah. in my business for 15 years. Yes, sir. And um, the, the other option, you know, with them, it, with the regular pressure treated is you potentially can get stubs on your toes or things like that as the wood kind of chips away. So longevity-wise on it, hopefully a better improvement for us overall. Um, and those ones, they're, uh, they started last week, and as you guys are pretty well, well aware, we had quite a weather um, start 
you know, last week, so it kind of shut things down back on it again this week. Um, and they're working north to south on those ones. They have to be completed by um, seed turtle nesting season, which is May 1st, but we're hoping to have all of them done by mid-April. Are all the posts going to be made of tracks too, or are those just going to be... So one, one of them, we're trying it out. The 11th Street is going to be made of the Trex material. Um, the company is out of uh, Ocala, is uh, going to kind of help us out with uh, trying the actual posts th out that way. Um, they are significantly more expensive than right. the regular pressure treated, but um, we're going to try it out and see, see what happens with that location and then, uh, potentially using those moving forward as well. But, um, but there, there's another material you might want to look at, an FRP, pull through the fiberglass. And it's probably a little more expensive than composite, but, I mean, it, it's indestructible. Okay. Appreciate that. These hey. are all existing um, beach accesses that are already there being replaced. No right. new beach access. Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, existing, being replaced, upgraded, um, that nature. And, and again, this is, we're, we're trying to standardize and trying to make this our, our standard moving forward as we replace these out, we replace them with this material. Um, those are the quick updates I have for you. Any questions that you all have for me? Any movement on the boat ramp study yet? Which one? The, you know, we got about a million dollars floating around for the boat ramp. We were waiting for the county to do a study on that. Yes, ma'am. So that would be our maritime master plan that you're, re you're referring to? Wait a maritime master plan now. Maritime master plan. So when, so when are we going to get the study on that so boat we ramp? We have a scope already ready to go. Um, we are waiting for our continued services with our purchasing department to come on board so we can put it out. What does that mean for the taxpayer? That means exactly what I just said. So I it's, say, it's not giving me a time. See, we're just waiting and wait. We've now waited over I a year. Had, yes, ma'am. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt Sorry, you. It's all right. No, I if, I, if I had a date of exactly when our continued services were, were on board, I could let you know, let you know that. You're more than welcome to reach out to me as, as often right, as well, you want. I would love to give you. Do we know why? Do they, do they need money for the study? I don't, you know, considering this boat ramp has got to be in our tiny little district, I'm not sure. Why do we need a $100,000 study when there's just a few places we can put a large Th boat this ramp. study that I'm referring to isn't just on a, a new boat ramp. It's, it's definitely for ideas for new boat ramps, but it's also all of a, uh, evaluating all of our existing boat ramps that we currently have. Um, so as you're aware, or very aware, we're having many improvements done to, mo to most of our boat ramps, and um, we're trying to continue to utilize any funds possible between Find and Uvalde and do improvements at our current boat ramps. So this this is kind of our what we call roadmap moving forward for what we can do to do as much as we have for what we currently have. Um, got a lot of money. It's been, we got, we've had a lot of money, and um, so we've waited a whole year waiting on a study, and I want to reiterate that nobody is happy with the county right now. Okay. And now we're being told that everything's going to be pushed off until a maritime master plan is done. But I, what I'm saying is the maritime master plan isn't what's holding up whether or not the county itself buys a new boat ramp. There is quite a bit of things that go into looking at just buying a new boat ramp. I understand that you guys have money waiting. I understand we've been looking 20 like years at it. That's yes, the problem. And now when the money... There's a lot of challenges with it just, just to buy a property, just to buy a property. We, I, I, and we I have know. a team That's that continues to look at that over and over again. It never gets talked about. The public owns it already. Okay. So we don't have to go buy a million dollars. It's already, it's literally got dirt down there. I drove around in it. Again, it's an it, amazing it, place and nobody will talk about it. I would be happy to get you in contact with myself and everybody else, you know, off record if you want to continue to talk about, you know, different locations. We, as the county, have been looking at this for a significant amount of time. We completely yeah, understand have. that we want to buy a new boat ramp or look for a new, new location of a boat ramp. But they it just, just don't move. They don't yet. act. It's to me and to my constituents that speak to me, it's all a part of the plan to privatize the waterfront and the beach. I, I don't just so you agree know, with that, but it's you're, like I said, you know your that. constituents are more than welcome, welcome to reach out to the county. They re you, that's what they hired me for. They literally hired me to come in here and say this stuff on their behalf. So it's when I turn around and tell them to go to a county meeting, I work for the port. It's our job. It's in our charter. And we put the money aside, and I can see you don't want to hear it, but you know what? They've been waiting to get in the water a long time, and it's so obvious to me and everybody else the county does not want them to get into the water. Okay, I'm not sure where that information is coming from, but again, just based on the county's any, actions any for the last questions? 20 years, sir. I feel like I've kind of exhausted this one now. Is there any other questions from anybody else? Okay, appreciate your time. Again, more than happy to you know take anybody's um, stuff as it comes available. So thank you. Thank you. Any other government representatives? Anybody else before I go? <laughs> <laughs> I finally have some time today since I'm the only one here and I don't have much to report. That's okay. <clears throat>
Lieutenant Steve Zukowski, Fish and Wildlife Commission, Patrol Supervisor for Coastal Flagler in St. Johns Counties. Uh, let's start with boating and waterways. Uh, let's see. Derelict vessel updates. We have um, worked through a process. Two more have been cleared for removal, so we have sent the letters up to um, St. Augustine PD, and m money will be, some more money will be released from Tallahassee April 1st is what they told us. So those two boats should be out of the waterways, and I think both of them are down by the unofficial anchorage here at Crane Park Boat Ramp, uh, near the Crane Park Boat Ramp, so they should be done out of there in April or whenever the city can get around to them. So we'll have two more gone. As far as I know, um, when I was reviewing the database uh, earlier this month, we don't have any new ones in our county, although Flagler has two new ones. One just washed up on the beach yesterday or this morning. So, um, <clears throat> so we're looking good here in terms of derelict vessels and getting those squared away. Uh, Okay, we've had a couple incidents that were on the waterway but aren't really boating and waterways boat issues, <laughs> but I'll bring those up. About two, uh, two Sundays ago, we had a domestic violence incident on a vessel that was at the time just north of Volano ended up. <clears throat> we were able to um, stop the boat, we got a report of a uh, man and woman where um, a woman was thrown overboard, thrown out of the boat. It was a sailboat. I think she was in a dinghy at the time, though. So we responded, and then eventually a sheriff's office got there. That was a domestic violence incident. Um, and uh, the sheriff's office was lead on it. But there was also a, a, a juvenile on board. And when information went up through sheriff's office, uh, these this, this party had been on their watch list. So um, let's see, the next day or two days later, officers assisted uh, people, investigators from DCF went out there and had to deal with it also. So everything ended well, but um, that's one incident we had to respond to. And domestic violence situations are bad enough when they're on land. Just ask any deputy or PD officer. They can go sideways very quickly, um, but they're even worse on the water when you have that environment out there. So fortunately, it went well. And I think that's because we had, um, uh, we had two FWC officers, two crews out on boats independently, and they were able to work together. And, it, and the officers did a real good job, didn't hesitate. And eventually, the sheriff's office, um, Deputy Braddock, got there. Were they, were they underway when he yes. lost her? Yes, they were underway. <coughs> wow. yeah. And, and, and uh, a, a, I guess a good Samaritan would be the word reported seeing the incident and reported it. And so fortunately, we had officers at that time in the area, uh, and we're able to get to it quickly. Mm. So that could have gone a lot differently. They, they yes, they're not fun. Um, uh, I mean, no matter where you are. I remember I was a young officer. The first one I went to was at a marina up in uh, Nassau County. When I was up there, and uh, at that time we didn't get any training. Um, and that sort of stuff. At least now, we even get training on uh, domestics, although not nearly as much as probably uh, mainstream law enforcement. And secondly, the next incident you might have seen on the news last week, airplane crash, a shorter runway in a marsh. So uh, what happened was that was a woman and the plane um, hit the marsh, was overturned. Uh, so what happened was uh, Officer Bill Miller, on my squad, he was uh, with Officer Alex Alvarez, who's an officer who's come back to us, but he's going through a short field training program. They got on the airboat, the county's airboat, with Lieutenant Underwood from the sheriff's office. And uh, then eventually, um, Officer Chamberlain from my crew got there, at his boat, but he couldn't get far back, as far back there. But Chamberlain, um, excuse me, but um, Lieutenant Underwood, Officers Miller and Alvarez got there, one of the first ones there. And then I think Fire Rescue got there and they, they were working to get the woman out, which they did. And then they performed CPR on her. And then they got her off to a hospital and she later passed. But uh, um, they were, they got there quickly. So the money, I presume you all, gave money to the sheriff's office to get that airboat, if my memory serves. 
So that's a, a, an, it's an, an area where it comes in very handy because our closest yeah. airboat is up at Guana that the biologists have, and that would take forever to get that. So that came in well, and who knows if a uh, situation is such that the boat, I mean, the, that plane was at a slightly different angle, that woman probably could have survived. But it was, it, was, it was unfortunate, and um, it was still daylight when this happened. So that airboat got to it right away, and uh, the th uh, Officer Miller and Officer Alvarez jumped in, and they forgot how deep you sink in that marsh mud. Oh, jeez. They went up to their navel, their belly button. So uh, their, their weapons had to be armored and all that stuff, but that's part of doing the job. So I uh, just want to let you know about that, and that piece of equipment um, came in very, was very useful there on that. So the, <clears throat> wasn't the pilot a professional yeah. performer? Mm -hmm. Acrobatic. Acrobatic. Yeah, yeah I... I I didn't know. I just know that from news reports. I don't know that from anything else. But um, do they know what caused the plane? Uh, an incident like that is actually investigated. Plane crashes are investigated by Florida Highway Patrol. Believe it or not. So the, there's a trooper investigating that. I don't know who it is. Um, feds will investigate it too, right? NTSB. Pardon me. Won't the feds investigate that too? Any Maybe, plane crash? Right? Sometimes. Right. I mean, NTSB can investigate a number of things. I don't know if that would be FAA, you know, flight administrator, but uh, we had that big fatality Easter Sunday of 2009 up in Palm Valley. 14 people, five died, the other nine were bad, mostly, most of them were badly injured. We were the lead on that, but NTSB came in also hmm. and did a report. They were only looking at it from a civil administrative thing. We were looking at it from a legal perspective too, and there were, there were several criminal violations, but um, None of them are really followed up on. That's another story, and that doesn't sit well with me, and this is not the venue to talk about it. So I retire if you want to hear a war story. You know, give me three hours, and I'll run you through it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I don't know, you know, who federally be looking at that, but I know it's statewide it's Florida Highway Patrol, which is interesting, but um, they're the ones who look at that. And I know, uh, uh, I think a trooper contacted me, and I put him in touch with Lieutenant Underwood. That's, That's the second one in like 10 years. I remember being anchored at Guana and watching a plane. I think it's less. I mean, we've had more there. I know. It's amazing. I watched it go into, again, the marsh. Now, one our marsh is nothing but mangroves. It's going to be harder to get into, you know. Yeah, as someone who worked down in South Florida, I would rather deal with you know, Spartina grass and all the stuff we have here versus trying to deal with mangroves. Yeah. And, and we have, you know, we're in that area of Florida where we've got a little bit of each, actually, uh, till about actually the inlet and then the marsh predominantly always takes over. But um, yes, mangroves aren't fun on that. We've had other planes uh, crash or been short of runway in the last few years, but people have not you know, perished. So this is the first one in a while, but that seems to, I it happens this, enough. I thought this is one of the longest airports. It, it was able to land the US-1, the president's plane, several years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's not a Air short Force One. Way. Yeah, Air Force hey, One. No, I, I, yeah, it's I, it's probably some pilot error thing, or who knows if who knows what an autopsy may reveal if there was some sort of, you know, cardiac incident or it's stroke. So strange that a acrobatic performer would yeah. die like that, you know, miss yeah. the runway, whatever. So, but that's you know that's why we do investigations is to see if we can find out. But you know you're. You know, your medical history, um, that's something. Uh, aviators typically, they have to have that on a regular basis, but who knows, anything can happen. Anything can happen. So that's, unless there's any more questions, that's all I have for boating on the waterways. <clears throat> Nothing to report on the fisheries front. Uh, it's a combination of we just haven't been able to get out there because, uh, or, and or we just haven't hearing, been hearing any good reports because we've been tied up with the, um, uh, the manatee stuff that I briefed you all on last week. And uh, so instead of it being a fisheries report, it's going to be a marine mammal report for this week. Uh, the, the, the fatalities that we're having down in Brevard County, as I mentioned last week, with the weather getting warmer and the water getting warmer, um, manatees are starting to migrate north, looking for food. We haven't had any fatalities here yet, but last Sunday night, 
we had a, or actually Saturday and Sunday over the weekend, not this past week and the weekend before, we had a report of a young adult about seven feet long that was in the area of Porpoise Point and it couldn't submerge. And what typically happens, the reason for that is because they've, what I call the manatee has been ramped, which means a small boat or a skiff, usually a jet ski, something without a propeller, usually just runs over the back of it and hits it, not <coughs> intentionally, but doesn't see it when it's right below the water because they don't have the facility to get out of the way as quickly as something like a dolphin. And plus the dolphin's echolocution and all that stuff, they hardly ever hit a dolphin unless it's sick. So, but this happens enough with, with manatees where basically their ribs break and they have internal bleeding. I think it's called a pneumothorax is what the marine biologists tell me, or marine mammal biologists tell me. So the manatee can't sound to get down deep and then it can't eat and it just stays at the surface and a little portion of its back is exposed. Sometimes you'll see prop scars, but a lot of times this happens with uh, smaller skiffs or in particular personal watercraft and there aren't necessarily any new prop scars. So there was one hanging around the Volano Bridge. It went from Porpoise Point to the Volano Pier to the Volano Bridge. Then we got a report of it late Sunday afternoon. It was in Robinson Creek, way back by Fort Mose, where it gets really shallow. So our biologists wanted us to go check it out. And in sun, we're, you know, we're losing sunlight. But fortunately, we had our little 21-foot bay cobia, and it got back there. Officers Dodd, and I, I'm trying to remember if she was with Officer Chamberlain, did a really good job because Officers Miller and Alvarez couldn't get back in there in our, our offshore boat. And they found the manatee, and the biologists wanted us to herd it out into the intercoastal waterway, and they come by in the morning and try to effect a rescue. And, yes, it did have, um, it, it had, I think, a scar on its back also, so it might have been hit by a small boat, ramped it, and then also... Uh, create a small gash at the prop. So we lead them. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen, and I don't mean to sound cynical, but I, I guess I've just seen enough enough times. To get the manatee man man out in the ICW, now it's dark. Okay, you guys can go home now. So everyone goes off shift, and then the next morning, where's the manatee? All the way <laughs> back in the creek. So we got there first thing, we located it, and then the biologist from Jacksonville came down and they launched at Volano and they came and got it. They have a specialized boat where it's kind of like um, a mullet. Um, you don't see them up here too much. Bird dog boat where the console's up front, but the engine's in the middle of the boat. Okay, there's no engine in the back, so they have like a little ramp. They basically just corral the manatee with a net and they pull it into the back of their boat. In a ramp, and they did, and the manatee was taken up to um, the Jacksonville Zoo, where the biologists have an office up there, and they're rehabbing it up there. I don't think it's been transported down to Orlando yet, or anything like that. So that's that was that's the one issue, not the one issue. That's the one incident we've had with manatees here since I was here last time. And then we had a report of one down by Wallaca in the St. Johns River just the other day. Same sort of thing. Um, it's not. Uh, sounding, so it's probably been ramped also because it's staying up top and part of its back is exposed. Um, so, uh, so that's that's all I have at this time. Right? I Question. saw some man a manatee sign went up at the edge of Hospital Creek. Are you familiar with that? I, I am not. Just a pole, and it's I've never seen a sign. It's a pylon. It just says, "Please, not no wake or anything." No, but put on my city. City, city put that, it's just like, please watch out for manatees or something. So they must be seen. Um, just one other quick thing. I did see yesterday that you got your $50,000 start and pay for. Um, yeah, I can give you a brief on that. If you don't mind. Thank right. you. I know it's a little bit of a segue, but I, I know Commissioner Flowers are very, I know you all are supportive of, of this also. So uh, you might remember probably a few months back, maybe two, three months back, um, Governor DeSantis proposed a 25% raise for all state law enforcement and haven't been around for 30 years. That's kind of the pie in the sky thing. You, it's like typical negotiating until you, pr you propose this, but you end up being less. So what happened was a couple th after the legislature reviewed it and a session just closed, I, was it late, middle last week, whatever, it was, it's been approved now. And it's going to be effective July 1st. So here's how it's breaking down for state law enforcement. Uh, the, the, bit, the, the basic starting salary will now be $50,000. So that's a bump up of probably about $10,000, I think, from 
the current starting salary. Uh, any officers who are below 50 right now will go to 50 for their salary. Any officers at 50 and above will get 10 percent. So that'll be, I guess, a nice retirement gift for me if I can. If we get it in July, then I'll at least have it for six months. So that's an across. They did get the 10 percent across the board. No, it, no. Here's how I'm, I'm getting ready to break that down for you. Five percent goes to all state all state employees, regardless of whether they're law enforcement or biology or anything else, 5% state employees are getting a, a, a salary increase. 10%, uh, excuse me, another 5% is going to law enforcement. So it's not a true 10% only to law enforcement. It's 10% total. Um, to tell you the truth, 5% uh, is nice because I've, uh, some years I've seen whenever we got a raise is only 2%. Right. So the, the, the important factor, though, is, or probably the more important factor, is the starting salary has been bumped up to make it more competitive. And it needed to be that way. Um, I, you know, I've been on for, it was 30 years in um, January, and I can tell you that the salary additive pay that you get for your college education or any additional courses, uh, that's maxed out at $130 a month. That's it. It's been the same way for 30 years. They haven't increased that at all. So, so. Wow. So it was a long time coming. Uh, the issue that we're ha going to have in FWC is some officers that have a salary additive for being on things like Officer Miller's on the dive team. There's 5%. I have another officer who's on a BUI task force. That's a voting under influence task force. That's 5%. Are those 5% salary additives going to be figured on what their current salary is and carry over? Or is that going to be based on their new $50,000, which means it'll be like a $5,000 bump? That's something that our agency didn't anticipate. So they're trying to work out the accounting numbers on that right now. I hope that comes out in y'all's favor. I hope so, too. Did you get any of the incentives, like, for moving or, you know, uh, when some of your new officers, there were some kind of other incentive, incentives that could be approved? Not that I know of. Okay. Not that I've seen. Bonuses, either. none of that. Okay. No, well, no, the bo I mean, if you, bon no, um, nothing like that. It's okay. just the, the issue is going to be if you're on a, if you're on, you have an additional duty, like I mentioned, and you get 5% here or there, that or 10%, it may be in some cases, how the agency is going to figure that out because the counting on that is going to be difficult um, for them because that money is going to have to come out of the agency's budget. So... Uh, I can see some of these in-house salary incentive things being put on hold for a while, uh, just based upon my experience over the years uh, how, and how to deal with that. That's not, those salary incentive monies are not guaranteed through this raise. Okay. All right. We don't have step plans in Florida for, like they do in the military or some sheriff's offices or CPDs for, you know, for years of longevity, you get a raise. Every, and that's got to be codified. We don't have that. If we ever do that in FWC, it's because we have certain in-house monies we get from who knows where. Um, and then we do that, and sometimes they dry up after three or four years. I've seen that. So. But that's a big step. So you got the 50 for everybody starting. Everybody that's not at 50 will come up to that. And right. then across, you know, most, most everybody else will get a total of 10%, the two 5%? Yes. That you'll get yes, everyone will get 10%. Uh, they'll either be bumped up to 50, 10% or bumped up to 50, whichever is greater. Okay. Okay. But again, the issue is going to be the people of the salary additives. Is that going to be based on what you're currently making? Right. Or is that going to be readjusted when you get to 50,000? So, um, yeah, the age, like I said, they got some accounting work to do. And no, folks, it is not math. I love when people use that term. Math has letters and numbers, if you all remember from school. Otherwise, it's just accounting or arithmetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, as, as, as my algebra teacher once told me several times. There you go. That would be more than once. Very happy for you guys. And again, I sat in the back. Well, thank you. And again, I appreciate, you. you know, your concern, Commissioner Flowers and everyone's support here. So, that is good news because that will help with recruiting and should help with retention and make us more competitive with... Um, uh, with sheriff's offices, so we're not losing people after three years all the time. Is there anything else you have questions about? Very good. Oh, last thing, blessing of the fleet coming up. It's going to be 
Blessing of the Fleet this year is April 10th, is, is um, Palm Sunday, so that'll happen before the next meeting, so I'll brief you on that. Uh, Officers Miller and Steve Chamberlain are going to be the lead people for, uh, for us on that. That's our baby, I mean, Sheriff's Office baby, excuse me. That's our event where we take the lead on that. So uh, we're going to have good participation. We're going to have one of our big offshore vessels from Volusia <coughs> County come up. And we're having an incoming tide this year, which will make it better. We're going to be able to use a, a, a um, clockwise pattern or motion, which tends to avoid bridge, uh, boats getting stacked up at the bridge because some people just don't know how to maintain a difference, uh, I mean, a distance between their boats sometimes. So that's uh, April 10th. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Yep. Right here. Any other government representatives? <coughs> Good afternoon. J.B. Miller, City of St. Augustine. And I um, wanted to let you all know that we will be posting, I guess locally it's called Bird Island, but it's uh, FWC calls it Julia's Island, the area northeast yes. of the fort. And I, the, Lieutenant, we're going to be posting it um, 20... March 25th. I'm 25th. sorry to mention that. Yeah, it's a combination deal with um, the city and the county. And for the first time, we'll actually be posting it with City of St. Augustine, um, no trespassing signs, as well as the FWC signs. And now, is this where the Least Turn colony is? It's uh, Least Turns, it's Wilson's Plovers, it's mm -hmm. uh, American Oyster Catchers, yep. and They're Black Skimmers. They're doing great. They are doing well. And I've seen FWC come out when a hawk is preying on those chicks. They come out, get the hawk, and move them up north somewhere? They do predator control when necessary. Yes, ma'am. And it's the that area, I don't know if it's how important it is, and I'll make this quick, is the area from the Julia's Island north into the Talamato is the most significant American oyster catcher nesting area and population in Florida. Wow. Um, very successful um, and, and growing, which is wonderful. And it's the second largest least turn rookery in the county. The Anastasia State Park has the largest. Matanzas used to, but because of erosion, they do not. So, but anyway, I just wanted to make sure you all are aware that uh, we'll be posting that. Are those going to be no postings for like in the marsh where they're at or the whole island? It'll be the whole upland part of the island. Okay, so people will come on their boats around to the beach still, but they just need to stay out of um, right. the high and dry where everybody's. I can remember when the first bird came. And I really want to thank, um, if you don't mind, thanking Todd Grant at the city. He got out there with um, Zach McKenna and immediately acted on that when we saw the first bird. So that's special that it's come that long, it that is, far. And it's, yeah. it's a highly significant population. Thank you so area, much. So. They seem to stay out of it. You know, I'm, I live right right across oh, from it. And you can, he can answer better. Yeah, we, we, have, we have incidences. Uh, I, that that I think it's pretty rare Hawks. getting up into the soft sand up there. I just I hadn't, I hadn't seen it very often. But. Well, just, just so you understand, I uh, mean, I'm a biologist. The, um, it does not take many incidences of human or dogs, for instance, for the colony to, particularly like the least terns, they'll just abandon. Oh, wow. And they'll leave chicks they'll leave eggs. So it is, it is, they are very sensitive to, to disturbance. Uh, of course, every time they get up in the air, a, a predator can, can get to them as well. So it doesn't take much disturbance. So that's why the diligence by FWC, the city, and, and of course the county. A loose unit. lab on that island can cause a lot of trouble. I've seen them when you let your dog, big dogs run loose, they can easily get back up in there. Dogs do what yeah. dogs do. And kids, yeah. And I think one of the county office, um, sheriff's officers actually pulled off. Somebody had left a cat out there last, last nesting season. He happened to be going by and saw a this cat? cat, a cat. Yeah, I don't which, remember that story, but that's not. Oh, no. I, that's possible, yeah. No, it wasn't possible. <laughs> it definitely happened. Bless his heart. He, he, was, he actually caught the animal. Uh, the animal was obviously fairly tame and came to him. You imagine what a cat could do on a, on a bird colony. Oh, so. my goodness. So, anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other government representatives? Hearing nothing. Uh, great. Uh, that brings us to Secretary Treasurer's report. Okay. As of now, city the city police law enforcement overtime we have committed eight thousand. We've spent two thousand eighty one of the sheriff's department overtime that we budgeted twenty five thousand. We've spent eight thousand one sixty one. Um, let's see. 
of the unspecified marine projects, we've spent 97.5, 90,000 was for the Volano Dredge and 7,500 for Regatta of Lights. Uh, let's see what else we have. That so far on that, and for in the Florida State Board of Administration, we have 23,179 in the operating account. We have 466, 466,950 in the money market account, uh, 1,111,000, and in the reserve, 1.5. Uh, we've budgeted 621,283 for, for tax revenue, and we've received to date 578,887. It looks like there's still 42,3 um, still not in. So that's it. Any questions? No? Okay. I don't think so. Uh, now that brings us to approval of minutes. We actually have two sets of minutes we need to approve, right? Uh, because at the last meeting, we failed to approve the minutes from the January meeting uh, because uh, Sandy uh, voted no and Commissioner West abstained. Um, so uh, do I, I, I would move to approve the minutes from the January meeting uh, for starters. Were there any modifications? Uh, Tom, you had asked for the change to the spelling of Volano last time. Yeah, I think that was the only modification. Um, are there any other uh, modifications for the January minutes? I would move to Did you make the motion? Uh, yeah, I, I move to approve I'm them as second, amended. Second. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. And now for the February minutes. Uh, any modifications to the February minutes? Anyone? I most. I got it at 10 o'clock this morning. Not enough uh, the day of the meeting. Uh, the many comments that were made that were important are not on there, and I've asked for that to be rectified many times, so I would not be approving those. Okay. Uh, so in that case, uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the February meeting? So move. Uh, and I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So abstains, yeah. and then Sandy will vote no, so we need to push approval of those minutes to the next meeting. Um, next up is engineering report. Sir, uh, nothing new to report this month. Can we get a report on what's going on down at Summerhaven with the county, please? I have no idea. We're not working on that at this but point. You're, but, you're, but you are the, you are a consultant for the port, and that's in our district, and I would expect you to know what the county's doing in our district to be able to tell us about it. I don't it. know what the county's plans don't, are. You do not know anything what the county's doing. As our consultant, you can't tell us. I, I, don't, I can't tell you what I don't know. Okay. Uh, no old business, so that brings us to new business. If I've got this straight, uh, new business item number one is still website redesign. All commissioners and AVID design. Is somebody from? Ben Reed. Avid. Hi. Say my name. Jennifer Reed, AVID yeah. Design Group. Great. Um, so Elise, you solicited comments from us a couple weeks ago. And I only got you <laughs> and um, Jane. Okay. So I Jane. Yeah, and I actually, I brought the comments that were submitted. Um, a lot of them were for, from Jane West, and then I think the others were from you. Right. Uh, a lot of those um, uh, typos and stuff, we, we corrected those oh, as well as added Tom's bio this morning. Um, and then I know one of the other ones we were missing, I think your bio but as well. But needs to be completely oh, redesigned. Versus. On the telephone, you should see what you look. I mean, you don't, it doesn't work at all on the telephone. I mean, the whole website needs complete redesigning. How okay, so it? that so sure. So we're I mean we're happy to work with you guys on redesigning the website. Um, I think what probably needs to be done is between a lot of the comments that Jane West had and yourselves is to kind of organize what it is that is irrelevant now and what it is that you would like to see in the future because I you know the, the website is quite old and so it has a lot of old information on it. Um, so what we probably need huh? Did y'all design it? How old is it? Um, well, no, it was before Avid was another company. They it is old. That's why it doesn't work. So, on the one, the phone so, the, so what happened is we built the first generation um, with the content. I, gosh. It was, it was a different company who started it. Yeah, but I believe we, we took over. And you took over. Seven, updated. six, seven years ago or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we, but we took the content from then, okay, and we have improved the technology of the site, but the content is still old. So what really needs, I think, would be a good um, 
a good thing for us to do would be to represent one, like one person be a representative to work with our agency to say, you know, work with you guys and say, this is the content that we need to keep. This is a content we need to add. This is content we want to get rid of. Because Jane has a lot of really good ideas about things that should be kind of put into the website to bring it a little bit more up to speed. Okay, but if you're still working with an old decrepit site, it's actually cheaper to redesign something just to... Just right. Okay. So the technology time. is not old and decrepit. It is, it's on a WordPress platform um, that is maintained on a regular basis. If there are some... It doesn't work on the phone. I mean, uh, the site itself, when you pull it up on the phone, you, just, you get these long columns of... You can't... There's some, only the very basic outline. So... It really has to work on the phone. Too. Okay, so I actually, I, I, maybe we could like look at it on a phone together and go through that because I just looked it up to pull up the agenda. Right. And then just the, and it comes up right, but then when you try to scroll down and do stuff, you get these long columns where the letters are all misaligned. <coughs> so you well, can't. so when you think about the, a mobile site, what has to happen is if it displays a certain way on a on a monitor, when you shrink it down to a phone, things have to fall underneath, right. so they can't be like. But a it's long not doing that correctly. Is what I'm trying to say. The, the the phone, the part that makes this phone work on the phone, is not. Jive and I. I've tried to use it so many times on the telephone. Okay, so probably a good suggestion would be then is for you to take screenshots of how it's displaying on your phone, and then we can kind of correct those issues to make sure that it's displaying properly. <coughs> we really need a new website design. No, I mean, we, and works, we can certainly put you on a new website, absolutely. Um, I'm th what I'm more thinking <laughs> of is what a lot of Jane's comments were, is the content that's presented. And so what what is our purpose when people come to the website? What do we want them to find? And, right. you know, do we need them to find a lot of links of things to do or do we want to stay more focused on what you guys do um, so so that well, would really we could be do both hmm? right. we could have links to all kinds of things like the cruisers net and all kinds of uh, stuff that's just interesting but still do business I think yeah, absolutely I think that your 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 process idea makes a lot of sense to deputize one person on this board on this commission to move forward with this and because Jane has been the most invested in it I would mm -hmm. say by far I think it makes sense to deputize her. I don't know if I can, in good conscience, put that on her without her uh, input, well, though. So maybe we can wait right. until next meeting to actually confirm that with her. In the meantime, though, if anybody else has any suggestions, it sounds like only Jane and I weighed in. So if you have specific things that you think could be added to the website, including links, um, is send them to Elise, and she can send well, them. Well, and on we can certainly add. provide a proposal to redo the site completely and entirely. Um, and so I can get a site made for three grand, all brand new, everything shiny and new builds and everything. Yeah, sure, so, absolutely. I mean, we're more than happy we, to do that. But we just paid three grand just to put the um, audio on there. That's what we paid, three grand for you guys to load the audio on the website. Well, no, actually, we maintain the site in several ways. We add the agenda, we add the minutes, we add the but new no, meeting, we, just we do paid, the audio. We just paid three that grand. Back years. And that was to go back all the years to okay. get all the audio on there. So are we there yet? Just, if it's not, yes. I mean, we pay them a monthly fee. Okay, I'm just talking about the three grand. That was for the backlog of audio. Okay. <laughs> Back, that was that was converting. Do we have all the backlog on there now on the website? Yeah, everything's yes. on the website. Okay. Yeah. How far back does that go? Yeah. Yeah. Three so I three years. years. Okay. If I might say, um, so Jane had a good suggestion. She basically put a bunch of things down that she thought were important, and I think you guys probably would too. And at the end, she says, "I know this is a lot, but I'm happy to help with the content. I also think the website just needs to be modernized a bit visually." So it sounds to me like Jane would be more than willing to jump in, and I actually know her personally. We could engage in a relationship to translate everything the board feels into one representative to work directly with Avid to make sure that we're, you know. You guys are friends and neighbors with Commissioner West? I'm sorry? You're friends and neighbors with Commissioner West? Uh, yes, we, are, we were, yeah, we were neighbors. And how long have you had this contract? I have to go back and look. Seven years, eight years? Seven, eight uh, years. Yeah, th that's not Jane really. I'm not, I'm not, I'm uh, simply asking because so much happens to here and we don't know the relationships of where money goes. That's all. No. It's a simple question. She's, There's nothing wrong with it. No, I just wanted no, to know. I wouldn't all. imagine there. I think it would actually be a good thing that yeah, anytime somebody's you know, going yeah. to funnel money. To yeah, and, and like I said, money, I, I, I don't know if you know. had a chance to see her email of all of her suggestions. I mean, there was a lot of really good, valid points that she kind of pointed out that she thought would be beneficial for the website. So it sounds to me like she's really the one that's kind of dug around and got her finger on the pulse of what probably needs to be you know, displayed on the website. Is, is there a, when, when you're formatting a, a, a website like from scratch, is there like two ways you format it if somebody's on a, say, a cellular phone or as opposed to a desktop? Is there? 
Yeah, so it's called responsive design. And so basically there's three different different kind of viewing ways that you can look at. It looks one way on a monitor. It comes in a different way and looks like a different on a tablet. And then as you get down to a, a cellular device, it gets... So it, does the, but does it's the website effective. recognize what you're browsing on or would you make a selection? Like if you were on the phone, say, yeah, I'm on a phone and then it's going to load differently? It, no, it absolutely, it, it responds to whatever, whatever you're viewing it on. Yeah, and, and a lot of people too, you know, there's a lot of adjustments that can be done with responsive design too because what it is, if you think about something being on a wide screen, the smaller it gets, it falls in underneath. Well, sometimes people want different elements to fall in underneath before others, and so we can make adjustments to that to see, like, you know, how it stacks, but it does kind of take it from this to this to this. Did Jane mention anything? I, I was out of the country for a while, and did she mention anything about the way to track how many people actually visit the website? Yeah, so you actually have full control of that. You have a control panel that has a full statistics program that tells you who visits, when they visit, how many people. Yeah, and it's and it's fully extensive of your website and not just geared towards like Google because a lot of times people put Google Analytics, but that doesn't take into account people that are coming from Bing and other search engines. This stat program that you have on the back end of your website gives you all those statistics. And I can share those um, credentials with anybody to go and take a look at them and you know, see, you know, view all the, it's a lot of data. I mean, you can, you know, you can sift through it and kind of figure out. Well, if we, we could go ahead, could we go ahead and vote Jane in as our emissary to, so that, you know, allows you all to work together and then you get something together, come back and we just uh, vote to have it all go ahead and get done. That way you and she can get together you know, before the next meeting. Yeah, I mean, and so I can certainly put you put a proposal together to completely redo the website, but what I would think is really important is that we kind of, we narrow down what content should right. stay and but what content should go. For, for I mean, the most valuable pieces are obviously your agendas, your minutes, your audios, like all the stuff that people really need to know, but how much more of a resource do you want it to be for other people? Because I'll give you an example. I have a client who I'm meeting with next week, and she said, I saw your port website, and I'm coming to visit St. Augustine, and so can we meet? But I found it very valuable, and the things to do section and told me about this cat cafe and stuff I'd forgotten that I'd even put on there so so th that's one example of how it's served as a resource so how much do you want to serve as a resource but yet you still have to have all the business stuff on there as well is but she, J Jane brings out some really good points as far as like, you know, um, adding a recent accomplishments section where you can provide updates to the public on what the board's doing. Um, you're one of the few lo local agencies that reports back to local law enforcement. Those reports should be made readily accessible. And then, she, you know, she's got like, how can we create a mechanism for the public to alert us of derelict boats and buoys on the loose. Um, so there's a lot of good ideas, but they're, you know, and we could get super detailed into how I would address each one of those, but I don't know that everybody wants right. to go through that process. If Jane is, is objected to it, we can just simply negate the motion. Could we not? Can we go ahead and, she sure seemed uh, willing when yeah, she was maybe, talking about Yeah, maybe we make a conditional motion. Conditional on Jane's acceptance, uh, I move to deputize Jane to be our emissary uh, to uh, AVID for uh, future website design and redesign issues. I'll second that. That's the uh, <coughs> second. State the question. The motion. Uh, the motion is that we're uh, putting Jane in charge of uh, this initial round of website redesign issues. <coughs> Subject to approval by all of us. Subject not to approval by Jane. <laughs> well, no, assume, would, assuming she accepts. That's not what I, uh, that's not what I meant by set, approving this or seconding. I thought Jane is going to work with you and y'all get everything together, come back in, show it to us, we say that's cool and approve it. Could we right, I think that's, her. that's. We can't appoint her without her saying okay. Right. It's a conditional. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah, we all have a separate set of motions on accepting any potent, you know, any yeah, proposal. So you make. We, don't, we don't have to vote on that. The only thing we're voting on right now is who the on this board is going to be the liaison, and that's what we're moving for, which is I have another question, Jane. though, on, on, oh, I'm sorry, we need to, I guess. Oh, no, no, we can continue no, discussion no, before the, vote okay, on. so all in favor of uh, deputizing Jane, uh, uh, assuming that she approves that, that, uh, that office. Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. No, right. it's subject to approval by, by Jane. all of us. Yeah. Well, if Jane accepts it, right. we're, we're going to have her be our liaison. Uh -huh. If she, we're voting yes, and then she, if she says no, then we got to regroup. Right. Yeah, and so if she says yes, I can work with her to draft a new proposal, to redo the website. Her and I can work on what we think, you know, should go into it. She can bring it to you all. Yeah. You all can decide yeah. if it's and approved, then approved, and then we right. can move forward from there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That way she can get to work. Question: If on, on a new website, is there anything that you would do to a website 
in the event that you were, were going to go like on Zoom or any, where somebody could go to the website and yeah. click on the meeting? Is there something that needs to be designed yeah. into the website? Well, the first thing I originally thought of when I was listening to him is that because it's kind of in your guys' control, you could simply get a tripod and somebody could put their phone on there and you could start a Facebook Live feed. And that's what a lot of people do. And so I don't know if we currently have a Facebook page for the port, but if not, I would suggest that we definitely establish one because it's definitely a good place to post the links that go to the minutes and the agenda because it's another avenue for people to find that information. But so to me, that was Facebook the simplest. To watch the meetings in the event we recorded them. Right. So yeah. to me, that would have been the simplest thing. Set up a tripod with somebody's cell phone on it, start a Facebook Live video, well, if let it stream. if it's sponsored, then we may have to have the uh, deaf thing going on at the same time. Well, I so that would, that would be something, you know, that would be more within if what you guys are required to do. Well, that's what this I'm saying. To if me it's was just like, sponsored Facebook and it's a video, I think you see what I'm saying, we just have to consider that, that's all. Right, absolutely, absolutely. But I, I'm thinking the quickest and simplest way to actually just have that running. And the nice thing about the Facebook Live is people can tune in live and watch it, but then it's also available afterwards to watch so it's a good way to have awesome. it would be online at the website to watch it's, it, it would all be it facebook. would all be through facebook because that's their technology mm -hmm. but you know obviously we could give people direct links to go to facebook but you know my suggestion would be that you get people to engage a bit like you establish a facebook page and get people to engage more because quite honestly people are more in their social media environment than they actually go to websites that so that may be the cheapest the, way we can actually get it televised i mean get it the video out there that'll be free like <laughs> what i just told you be free when they do it <laughs> yeah but it's just you know <laughs> yeah. if anybody on the um if anybody on the board is proficient in social media or kind of working with facebook it's super easy to do and it might just be something that you use as a temporary fix but you know nowadays you don't you know it's not as complicated as getting all the audio visuals and all that kind of you know you, right, right. for most purpose <laughs> people won't even look at bad video anymore like this is really bad video they're just happy to be able to see it so okay just a suggestion Two questions. First of all, there's already a button on here that says listen to monthly meetings. Yeah, that's Correct. Right. So that's the monthly um, service that we provide for you where we take the audios day after she prevents it. We convert them um, to a file that we can actually load on YouTube and then we embed them in on the site. So you that's can working hear. Now. And, yeah, and it has like three years worth up there. And this is the, the website on my phone. See, it's very hard to read. That kind of goes. Yeah, that's what Sandy had saying. mentioned. I think. About yeah, it. see those columns. Oh, you can't do anything with those. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can fix that right there. That's those are the four blocks under the knee. Okay. Yeah. So, but let me see one really quick. I'm sorry to be on your phone, but um, so if you go to He's got about us. Audio. So. You'll see on the audio one, if mm -hmm. you want to look at it, so you have the audio, audio recordings of, okay. all, of the, okay. all of the, all of the, um, Okay. Meetings, but, but yeah, I'll check that bottom part out if that's okay. I have one other comment. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I think I suggested that it's in another meeting. If we have a link to say to the city of St. Augustine or a link to St. John's County government and vice versa. If the city of St. Augustine can have a link to our website, sure. the county have a link to our website, et cetera. Can, can that be worked out? Absolutely. And that's very, very simple. I mean, we can actually just do a, a top navigation level that says, link, you know, useful links, and then we can put them, you know, as a link underneath there where people can access it easily. But, but great. Yeah, that's absolutely. Okay. And then I think you asked, you asked one more other thing. Um, I think these are your, are these your comments where you said the about... The area section is mostly about oysters and manatees. Uh, that was me, yeah. Oh, okay, all so right, that's, that's a, all your stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a content issue. The about me section, it really is, I mean, there's a lot about oysters, there's a lot about uh, manatees, but there's not a lot about the board okay. or the port district in general. But that's, I mean, that's a content question, one that we'll need to produce yeah. original content for. So yeah. I think Jane, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to take that too, but maybe uh, Jane should uh, okay. be the... Yeah, and we can, I can just work through this list with her okay. and then come up with something for you, but... Mm -hmm. um, but I'll, I'll work on fixing that bottom part of the home page. Yeah, I'd just like to see. I'm, I've done websites, and, and you know, they can get a conglomeration, you know, fix, 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 and just sometimes it's better to, easier yeah. and cheaper, just go in and redo it. 
Yeah, and you know, I think really honestly, I mean, if we can establish a relationship where somebody is really on point and we can say, okay, what's really important that needs to be, I, I think, you know, when we transitioned into this stage of it, we were taking a lot of the old content and trying to really kind of put what we could put on there, but nobody had a real mm -hmm. vision about this is what we want to present. And, you know, it even can be as much as when you come into the website, are you more here as a visitor? curious about things or are you more here about our business and what you need to find of our stuff and maybe that's you know maybe that's organizing navigation a little bit better to drive people to the section that they need to be in okay. great All right. uh, any other comments I think so I think that uh, concludes it thanks so much thanks great can you uh, let Jane know she's appointed yeah Elise can you <laughs> maybe can you thanks. email Jane and let her know I think can you let Jane know we voted somebody her. needs to let Jane know that uh, well, I don't she's got, her on a she's got more funny. homework yeah so Elise will email her great thank you so you're done with me yeah. yes okay, thanks, thanks. Uh, so item number two is meeting schedules uh, schedule new time for meetings schedule new day of week for meetings uh, Commissioner Flowers That we're waiting on some information from from her for that. Did you have information for us on the meetings? Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, okay, so these are for here. Um, the second, third, or fourth Thursday. This is this would be for here. Just to be clear, here. the this, city, city of Saint Augustine Beach. City of Saint Augustine Beach, where we're not limited to getting out at five thirty. And that second, third, okay. or fourth Thursday. Second, third, or fourth Thursday. Okay. Or the first, second, or third Wednesday. All for here. All for here. These Sorry, are second, these third, or fourth win uh, Thursday, and then which Wednesdays? One, two, or three. One, two, or three. Okay. And that's, so we're not limited. If something's continuing on past 530, we don't have to okay. get out. Okay. Um, is it well, the same we have time? to make sure if, if you guys want to do another location, you just you have to make sure that it's set up to where there's mics and you could, you know, plug in and, and able to do all Did, the. Was it voted that we were going to change or this? No, no, no. We were just exploring it. It was just oh, okay. for. Yeah, I think that I think the main issues, uh, and, and others can add to this if I've missed anything. I think the main issues. One is there have been some complaints about the timing of the meetings, specifically the degree to which they interfere potentially with um, county commission meetings, um, but also because they're so early in the day that potentially suppresses public turnout. Although contra that, they are early enough in the day that uh, government representatives can actually come here and they're not having to stay till seven o'clock at night. Um, the second issue was about what a uh, member of the public was bringing up earlier, that this room specifically has, <laughs> has been hostile to us about the idea of, of videotaping or live streaming. And the city of St. Augustine might be a friendlier environment uh, well, where it would be easy to accomplish that. But if we have a, a cheaper, easier technological workaround to that, um, to me, it makes more sense to keep it here in no small part because of how awful it is to park uh, downtown. Um, yeah, talk, talk, about get down talk about suppressing uh, could public walk involvement. And bike ride. Well, some can, what but our, our district is not just downtown. I mean, want to come. our yeah. district, yeah, extends all the way to the south end of Anastasia Island. At least, how long has it Nobody been? Nobody comes Tuesdays? now. How long has it been? On Tuesdays. Forever? Since I started and before that. So it's been. It's been over, been at least 25, 30 years that I know it's a, of. It's a real problem that it conflicts with the county commission meeting because so many people, that's big politics around here. And if you want to go to the county commission, you just can't make, you can't make this meeting. And it just seems too difficult. The, the problem you might have, though, if you change the time to later mm -hmm. is like, um, if you're doing it at say five instead of three, that conflicts with you know, people want to are getting together with their families for dinner, you know, kind of thing. Well, I so, think Matt had a good point when he mentioned the the, um, the county and city employees of such as yourself. Do you guys want to weigh in on that? What are your thoughts on that, Steve? I'm sorry. <laughs> I no, I mean you know coming here if, if, if the meetings were later. Would that what was the time frame again? Well, right now, you know, well, obviously it's at three, but if they did it at five or six, so five to seven, say, yeah, that should not be an issue for 
Well, it's not going to be an issue for, let me speak for myself. For FWC law enforcement, that's not going to be an issue. We don't want to speak okay. for the city or the county. I think um, Officer Underwood was shaking his head to that when he was Josh, because, you know, he's got kids and stuff. He was not happy about he well, does. everybody's going to have. Like, and it's going to be, I know it's not going to be easy. I have to right. I have to eat. So we're not necessarily talking about uh, doing it at a later time. Well, uh, that's, we're talking about a couple things. Possible new time, possible new day of the week, and possible new location. It sounds like there's not a lot of enthusiasm for a new time, what if time I got that right. The, what time is the city commission that we interfere with? You took That's county a county commission. commission. Can commission. Sometimes. They can run they quite sometimes late run the late into our right. meetings. I, I think maybe about a qu how, how often does the county commission go past 2.30? And then right before this one started. Okay, so it, yeah, about half, about half the time it seems well, like. What time does the county start? We start at 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? But also, if you've been at a, if you had to, if you wanted to go to a county meeting, then you've waited okay. to the end for public comment. Oh, sometimes you're, still you're, sit, it's an all day, or if you decided I'll to come here. Sometimes uh, it goes past five. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, Mr. Meek, yes? Uh, just so the board is aware, not that I'm indispensable in any way, shape, or form, but if the ultimate selection is the third Wednesday or fourth Thursday, I will be forced to resign due to other governmental obligations I have. That's, uh, I, I'm not particularly but, swayed to, to move the meetings at all, but... Which of the days that you propose are not in conflict with the county commission? Are all of those not in conflict with the county commission? Yeah, the Thursday, Wednesdays and Thursdays are never in conflict with the county commission, yeah. right? Yeah, so all of those days would okay. not be in conflict. Well, either of those days is okay with me. <clears throat> At, um, I would, I would, I'll make a motion. I'll, do you want to do it to this meeting or at the next meeting? Because we're just getting the information, actually. Yeah, maybe we should, uh, I don't know. Jane may have some real restrictions with family and right. whatnot yeah. and obligations. So we, so. Should, we, have this, <coughs> we have this information. Let's all uh, mull it over uh, until the next meeting, and we can all go and you know, make sure that our schedules are actually potentially clear for this and that there aren't any other significant conflicts. When are, when are City of St. Augustine uh, Commission meetings? It's uh, every other Monday. Monday, yeah. Every other Monday, okay. So no, no, uh, no conflict there. Mondays, there's holidays that fall on Mondays. Right. At least, um, would you may email this to Jane just so that when we meet at the next meeting, she would. Talking about the days. Yeah, time. the days she yeah, would have the time days to contemplate. Potential. It might be worth also looking into if this is, would potentially conflict. Where does yeah. Mosquito Control meet? Because you know, if we're trying to avoid conflicts with other boards or commissions. School board. School board too. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I think well, that yeah. that makes sense. Uh, no vote on this today, but we should all mold us over and also uh, do a little homework yeah, to see what yeah, other potential conflicts are. Yeah. Well, I won't. Yes. I, I, yeah. I'll just say that I, I won't vote for any day that's going to bounce somebody off this board because of conflict. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm not, I'm not interested okay. in trying to, I'll to just bounce anybody. I'll say that up front. Um, okay, uh, any other uh, discussion on... Uh, consolidated B and D, aka number two, under new business. Hearing nothing. Uh, next up is Secretary Treasurer. Uh, we okay. got a proposal from Elise already. No, no. we got the letters. We got the letter from right. the firm. Right. The firm itself. Mm -hmm. All. So the firm is resigning. The but, firm is resigning. But I am. You are proposing to continue, to continue on, services. Continue the services as it stands. In well, the same services. Individual capacity. In my, yes, in an individual capacity. Yes. <laughs> I never understood why we had you as our secretary and needed an another business. That we no, were the paying. firm has always, I mean, they hired the firm, and there was always a representative from the firm to be at the meetings. It was under the impression many years ago that they needed financial statements which they don't need because the auditors do the financial statement. Right, so we don't have to pay a firm pay. anymore. So we don't need that. We don't need it. We just no, need No, because I right. do everything. Right, I've anyway. never understood why we no. had them. That's what I'm so, saying. So we, it was just extra money that we were paying no, out for them. No, it was, it'd be the same money because it's the same workload. It's the same amount of work. It's just not going through. Uh, just under a different banner. That's just under a different banner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But also, am I right in thinking that you will not be with that firm soon? No, I are, won't. Right, so you are re semi-retiring but would continue to work. Oh, yes, I'm so, not retiring from here. 
so we would potentially have more of your time. <laughs> we, we could make we could make even greater demands are on we, you. Are we voting I think to I think Elise would probably do a lot of the work actually in our office, isn't it, right, Elise? Well, not all the time, but you have more time to go. I've been into that office, and it's pretty bad. But do you want to spend eight hours a day in there? No. <laughs> uh, no. But it doesn't matter where you do it. It's where all the records are kept, and I'll be able to go in there and actually straighten up mm -hmm. and go through all the and records. That's something, Miss Elisa. This board should never have had to wait for somebody to retire. This board should never have had to wait to have our records in order, and I have been begging for that for almost four years. So I'm glad somebody's going to finally have the time to get our records in order. Okay. So. Well, it might take me some time, but I'm going to do it. But the thing also is um, there's records that we are not required to keep for 25 years that I got in there. Right. So I'm going to go through, and I usually go to a records management class. Mm -hmm. They usually have one either online or locally. Mm -hmm. So I may just double check to look back which records I can Please make sure you don't get rid of anything until you speak with the state archives because no, 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 right, no, they no, do no, want because some of those old records. comes directly from government. I can't right. do anything unless they tell me. So do we, um, now, do we need make, to see a proposal? Yes, Okay. I will do that. Okay, so I will have it for the next meeting. This was just a discussion then. There's no... You're voting to say yay or nay, basically. To see your proposal? No, to approve that... Retain. Continuation, continuation of services. Of services by me individually. Okay. Yeah. I move to ask Secretary Treasurer Elise Kemper to continue her services to the Port Board. As Secretary Treasurer in her individual Secretary capacity. Treasurer. At the second. same rate we've been paying. At the same rate, right? Yeah. All also Chris already seconded. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None? Great. Uh, last order of business on new business is Port Consultant. It's actually an executive director because Port Consultant would not be an employee. And a Port, as an executive director, would be an employee. And then that person would be between us and our contractors uh, which we've had so many problems with to hopefully stop those problems. Things like when we don't get a timely inspection, the executive director would say, wait a minute, we've got to have that timely inspection. Or we don't have insurance or something on a project supposed to be there. Port direct, I mean, executive director is this person who has a lot of um, experience on the ground with dredging and such and whatnot, government contracts. So I wouldn't call it a consultant because we would need them to be an employee to have the obligation directly to the taxpayer. If you do an employee, if you're, this is why there are no employees And if you do that, we will be paying unemployment. No, you won't. You can 1099 them. No, then they're a consultant. A that's that's a consultant. A paycheck, you have to take out federal unemployment, Florida unemployment, federal withholding. Yes, you. Ma'am, I've done that myself from my living room. It's so easy to hire somebody. It's not yes, hard to pay it's, that. Yes, it's easy no. to hire somebody. No, it's not. All those things I can do online. One Once a quarter, I go in and I pay the... The what is called it's not unemployment insurance anymore. It's called something reemployment or something. Fixes. Right. I pay that. It is. All Florida, that stuff. You have to pay Florida, right. You have to pay Florida. Right. Right. It's, it's very rates easy. Are when you start. I'm not saying it's not easy. That has nothing to do with it. It's a cost, though. And what is the cost? How, so what and what is the cost? The you have to go through all this. What is the business case for having an executive director? We've had a project a in the last 20 years that yeah. potentially could have used an executive director, right? Summerhaven. We have no others on the horizon that I'm aware of. I don't see any. Well, I was assuming that the port was actually going to start working and following its charter at some point. And if we do our charter, we definitely need an executive director. We've got money going out for boat ramps and launches over at uh, Lincolnville, but that money went to somewhere else. But we do not have a paper trail. We actually have the, uh, what's it called, the contract, the government contract on that boat ramp 
signed and gone. But that money have... went out and it was changed to another project and we don't have a paper trail for that of tax. But that's why I keep saying we got to have those um, grant applications. They answer a lot of questions and there's a signature at the bottom that that person is swearing that's what it's for, that's what they're going to do with it. An executive director would stop this bleed out and fleecing that we're facing. If we decide to work. And the thing is, if we never do another project, what are you, going to do you don't pay them. They only get paid. This is an hourly employee. It's the only same way we're doing we do with something. Ken Crowder. Yes, but it is. With just Ken Crowder. A, he only, only paid him for what he worked. Yeah, just a consultant yeah. is what we need. But, but this person would not, again, because of insurance and obligations, a consultant doesn't, do this, doesn't have the same legal well, obligations to the board. You know. But it, it would, the point is, it would have to be an employee, so they're they're obliged to this board, and not to their board of directors. And that's the only thing that, if we decided to ever do a project again, that could uh, protect this board from some of the things we saw happen at Summer Haven. Speaking of which, it would be really nice because uh, we did get the hundred sixty thousand dollar. Did y'all get your emails on that, on the Summer Haven study? Something like that would be excellent to have. Uh, somebody protecting our the interests of the taxpayers on the ground. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, suggest that we seek out and try to find a qualified consultant as Ken, was Ken Crowder. I don't know how you would do that. Maybe advertise? I think um, he advertised for Ken. I think he was advertised. The request for something, RF something goes out. RFP. Well, I think RFP. the first thing we would need to do would be to create a job description. So who would do that? Right. Who wants to create a job description for executive director hey, slash consultant? What about you? I'd, I'd be glad to do that. The wishes me to do. I'd be glad to do that because I've got a lot of inputs from some very talented taxpayers. Well, I think that we'd be glad job. to look at it if you do that. I will bring it to mm -hmm. you. Okay. I will send it to you before the next meeting. Great. Okay. Uh, I don't know that there's any other thing else to discuss uh, on that, and that will bring us to public comment. Robert Hayton, I'll begin on the uh, um, streaming. Uh, if I, I would like to see if we could um, set up a camera here and before next week and try it out and, um, you know, not say it's going to go for the whole meeting, but everybody can see the technology, how it works, and, and, and look and decide then if you guys want to go that way or look at it. I think we'd have to have the Facebook page first. Though, right. right. Can't just broadcast. As I think about it, we must have a YouTube account that's hosting our... We do. So we, must, we should be able to stream on YouTube. YouTube has a, a live streaming function as well. That might even be an easier way to do it because then we don't even have to set up a Facebook page. We well, can already use our existing account. Social media was, was right, but we're talking about testing it out to see, oh, you know, yeah, to yeah, try yeah, to get yeah. it going as soon as possible. See if you're happy with it. Yeah, I think that's you a know, good idea. No, I, you can't do it or can do it, well, all that stuff. Suppose we could record it so it's easy enough. I'm going to email Avid about so that and fun. see if we can you, we can piggyback on our existing YouTube account to see can, if we uh, can uh, live stream it uh, for the very next meeting. And we can use my phone if we need to. Who knows? I've got a tripod if you want me to bring it. Yeah, that'd be great. Does anybody have a... How much, you know, for an hour and a half meeting, I mean, how much... Well, Come to take, gobble up your iPhone data, or no? I think so it's, it's just streams. live streaming. It's just passing right through. Right now. Oh, oh, okay. It's just using it as, as long as you're on the camera. Wi-Fi here. Yeah, it should be <coughs> fine. I'll, I'll email Avid about that immediately, and we'll see, see if we can get it going for next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, comments by. Oh, sorry. Any other uh, public comments? Hearing nothing. Uh, comments by commissioners. Tom. Not really. <laughs> if I think of something by the time we get started. Check back in. Uh, Chris? No. Uh, nothing from me. Sandy? I just am very excited. I want to make sure everybody knows that we did get the $160,000 check for, excuse me, the FDEP got the check for um, doing the feasibility study down at Summer Haven. Summer Haven has never had a feasibility study. With all the tax dollars we have dumped into Summer Haven, not one time have we ever done a feasibility study. I've asked for that over and over again. For some reason, the port would not approve it to be the sponsor, but thank goodness. 
Uh, and I'm grateful to uh, Miss Lizbeth Darby, her friend Miss Sheila, and their lobbyist Miss Ellen, as, long, as, as well as uh, Travis Hudson and our Congressman Renner, who made sure that went through. So we now have a $160,000 study that FDP, FDEP will come in and do themselves, which we will be able to have access to, to know what's feasible and be able to move forward. And that study is for road access, right? No. Nope. That's what, it's, studies, that's what it said in the email you sent us, and that was why we didn't want to vote for it. That's just a little tiny have, thing there, and you'll see the whole thing. It was not just for road access, I, and I it read never the whole was. Thing. And we never told you that. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, with that being said, it is time to adjourn this meeting. The next meeting will be uh, Tuesday, April 19th. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Tell you what everybody told me when I... Bye.